Coming up on today's show, the PlayStation 5 finally has a price and a release date. We're talking about the Oculus Quest 2 pre-orders, and yes, we finally played Among Us. What's good, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the What's Good Games podcast, your source for video game news, commentary, analysis, and funny stuff every Friday. I'm Andrea Renee, joined in studio by Miss Rihanna <gasps> Manuel. Hello, I'm here. I'm so glad to see you. I'm glad to see you. And Brittany Brombacher is here, too. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hi, everybody. I hope that you guys have been enjoying this week. It has been a wild oh. one so far. We had multiple streams. Multiple things happening, even more streams tomorrow, and it has been awesome. For those of you that may be concerned, <laughs> both Rihanna and myself have negative COVID tests. We took necessary quarantine precautions mm -hmm. and are being safe. So thank you for your concern, but we're all good. Uh, Steimer is out this week, taking the week off, working on some work stuff, and also her car is in the shop. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's so true story, you guys. A uh, branch from one of my trees fell on Steimer's car when she was here recording the show. Act of God. You that know, happened. Sometimes it happens. Yeah. So now she's getting it fixed. <laughs> you know, being an adult. Anywho, I just wanted to say I'm excited because it's episode 191. You know what that means, ladies? What? Episode 200 celebration is imminent. Coming up. Oh Can you goodness. believe it? 200. 200 episodes? Wow. That's crazy. That's just... No. Where has the time gone? <laughs> I know. We got to figure out something to do. Something special to commemorate 200 episodes of oh, yeah. What's Good Games. We will accept your suggestions, ladies and gentlemen. Tweet to us at What's Good underscore games. Write to us at contact at What's Good Games dot com. Or, you know, join one of our many communities like Discord, Facebook, the subreddit. I feel like 10 people are active on, <laughs> you know, but it's still Thanks. there. It's still is, there. It is. It is. Yeah. Thank you so much to September's Patreon producers, Chewy's Godson, California Cated, Justin Foshi, Punctified, Ferris Ate, Mohammed, Mohammed, Marcus Brown, and Alex Regapolis. Ooh, we did it in a different order today. Oh, Alphabet oh I was going to say alphabetical, but that is definitely not alphabetical. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. It is not. And welcome to our Patreon community, Kevin Boyle? Gaboyle? 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 I don't know how to say Gaboyle? that. Gaboyle? Is the G silent? Is the B silent? Is it just Goyle? I don't want to say Boyle, so let's get fancy and call it Gaboyle. Gaboyle? That's nice. Ooh, I like Gaboyle. that. Gaboyle. It's good. Ooh, you're a fancy Hopefully, Kevin, Kevin, one of those is correct. Uh, welcome to our <laughs> Patreon community. Don't forget that you can be part of the show by submitting questions every week at patreon.com slash what's good games. You can also get the show ad free, among many other benefits, like the wonderful streams we're doing this weekend, Brittany. Oh, yeah. I don't know why I just said, oh, yeah, like a your Fargo, Fiargo accent. Fiargo. Fiargo. Yeah, I believe we chose 1 p.m. as the start time for our happy hour Q&A live stream, which means our after hour stream will kick off at 3 p.m. Pacific. And it's going to be great. Patreon.com slash What's Good Games. We're playing Among Us, which I have never played. Oh, boy. So Ooh, I, I think I'm in for a time. <laughs> Yes, if you, you guys are. missed the stream that Rihanna and I did with eight of our friends on Tuesday. Boy, oh boy, is that <laughs> worth going to the Twitch archives to take a look at because it got crazy. Yeah, must see for we sure. We had <laughs> lots of friends join us. We had Yusuf McGee. We had Maria DeLaw. We had Blessing, ODA Jr. from Kind of Funny. Joey Noel was there. Uh, Holly Call. from Ubisoft was there. Oh, Kali oh, Adams joined us. Zombie Kills. Boy. Ooh. There was a lot of murdering happening. A whole lot. A whole <laughs> lot of murder. Mm -hmm. and there was even a helmet at one point. Yes. <laughs> Re took one of the props from the studio and modeled it during the stream. <laughs> it was a moment. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hopefully I can find this on Twitch so I can watch that. You I, absolutely that can. Okay. <laughs> and Brittany, it looks like we have a new podcast reviewer. Uh, I will underscore destroy you. Hmm. Thank you for your podcast <laughs> review. It was a positive review. It's just the name is, you know, a little, a little intense. You know, I, yeah, it's a little intense. But hey, thank you so much for the five star review. We really appreciate it. If you have not left us a review on your favorite platform of choice, please do. It helps us out a bunch. And then we get to read them every week and get inflated egos when we're feeling down. <laughs> Did you read the one from K67BHS last week? I didn't read the actual text of it, but I think that one's actually worth reading here because I read another one about someone who got a root canal while listening to us. 
Wow. So I tweeted about this podcast review because I think it encapsulated so much about what What's Good Games is. The review says, are you ready for butt clenching, whiskey sipping, wine swirling, magic eight ball shaking, skirt blowing mayhem? If so, then set your difficulty to baby ass baby mode and jump right in. Oh my God. Can we like f- use that? That's amazing. Yeah. I know. It's genius. <laughs> So that's from K7, K67BHS, and I feel like we need to make that like our new company slogan. Yeah, right, honestly. right there yeah. on the website. <sighs> yeah. So good. So thank you. This is what you guys can do for us to help support What's Good Gains. Leave us a five-star review on your podcast platform of choice. But it's been a busy week, as we mentioned. So let's go ahead and dive into the news, starting with the PlayStation 5 showcase that happened this week. Ladies, we did a live react. Whoa. <clears throat> Ladies, we did a live react. That's what I was trying to say. So much emotion. <laughs> God, I just got really choked. <laughs> oh uh, no, seriously, though, we finally got a price and a release date. Sony going toe to toe with Xbox with their top of the line version at $499.99 for the, the disc PlayStation 5, the right. disc less or the digital PlayStation 5, three ninety nine ninety nine. What did you think, ladies? I Sin- thought, I mean, that's what I predicted personally. Um, and I do like that the disc less version um, has the same specs and it has the same power capabilities. And really the only choice you have to make is do you want a Blu-ray player or not? So I was pleased to see the prices personally. Yeah. Yeah. Same. I think that was... Yeah, sorry. Go ahead, Brett. It's, it's okay. You know, we'll only be doing this three years. One of the day, these days, we'll get the we'll get the timing down, Pat. Um, yeah, I like Re. I also predicted that the, that would be the price point. It makes the most sense, and I think the three ninety nine ninety nine makes the most sense. Especially a lot of folks are like, oh, two ninety nine ninety nine for the Xbox Series S. But that console is not as powerful as the Xbox Series X, so therefore, it makes more sense that the PlayStation All Digital Edition would not be that cheap. So for all of those reasons, I'm with you, Ree. The thing that's kind of confusing to me, not confusing because you just cleared it up, though, is I feel like the communication hasn't been super clear on what the spec differences are between these two consoles, between the all-digital PlayStation 5 console and the fat console or the discful <laughs> console. Discful? But, <laughs> discful. But yeah, I mean, from what I was reading, too, it sounds like at some point it was made clear that uh, they're the same internally, just no disk drive on one of them. <laughs> and when Andrea and I were doing our live react today, we were like, well, what's the spec difference? Like, is it $100? Is that what it takes to put in the disk drive? Apparently so. Apparently Either so. way, mm-hmm. I, I think the pricing is spot on. Yeah, well, when you look at the market rate for a 4K Blu-ray player as like a standalone device, they are around $100 for starting prices. I mean, obviously you you can get them a little bit cheaper if you, you know, find one on sale or you have a coupon or whatever. But I mean, if you just buy one off the shelf, they're almost always at least $100. And so to me, that makes sense. So this is an ultra HD Blu-ray player that does play 4K Blu-rays. And for me, somebody who has a 4K Blu-ray collection, without hesitation, I'm getting the disc version. But also without hesitation, Thousands of gamers are also <laughs> getting the disc version. Millions potentially, even if they don't want it, because it's all they were able to pre-order this week. <laughs> because yep. in the one of the sloppiest pre-order rollouts I've ever seen, wow. a bunch of people were able to secure pre-orders this week, including you two. Yes, definitely. I got my pre-order from Target and... I was one of those folks who was like, ah, I don't need the disc. I don't have a 4K TV. I have plenty of things that can play Blu-rays right now. So I was going to go ahead and get the, the discless edition and I couldn't. So I went ahead and yeah. I got that, that bigger, beefier pre-order Seems from Target. like that's the one everyone wants is yeah. the little digital edition. So speaking of this, Justin Foshi asks from patreon.com slash what's good games. Any thoughts on the pre-order disaster following the showcase? <laughs> and Daniel Hole adds to adds to that do you ladies think someone got fired because they forgot to put the last slide with the pre-order information (laughs) in the deck definitely not because knowing how many times they rehearse these things and look at these assets they did not forget to put it in they just willingly made the choice to not put it in for god knows why i I don't know i don't i don't don't understand Stand it at all yeah so thankfully I was able to get mine one of mine at Walmart my grandma was able to get one at Walmart and then Jason got his at Target 
So I think we're all good here. But here's the thing, because I don't trust this system. <laughs> Whenever people say like, yo, console pre-orders go live tomorrow, blah, 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 I say bullshit. <laughs> I've been around the block too many times and gotten burned too many times to so know that's usually not the case. I think about recently the SNES Classic. Remember when those pre-orders were supposed to go live and I feel like they launched early and then you had to like clench your ass to hopefully get one. But uh, regardless, I was downstairs eating my cereal, my Cocoa Puffs, and then I was like, you know, I think I'm going to check Twitter and just see, just see if any of this shit's go gone live yet, because I didn't believe it was actually going to happen tomorrow. Sure as shit, Walmart had just put up their pre-orders, so I was able to snag a couple. Well, and then, I was able to snag one, and then, yeah. yeah. everybody had to follow suit. There yeah. was just no way that they were going to hold back while Walmart was walking in and just, like, cleaning no. the house on all the pre-orders. <laughs> Um, but it's interesting that you bring up that your Nintendo Classic Edition because that's what burned me with Amazon. I mm. was able to secure a pre-order for both the original Classic and the SNES Classic. And Amazon both times confirmed my order, mm. took my money, and then just like a week before was like, oh, actually, oops, we um, can't fulfill your order. We've refunded you. And I was like, <gasps> That's I was like, what? Sucks, what do you man. mean? I would have bought something from another site. Oh, oh. yeah. So never again, Amazon. No. Nope. Never again. Never again. I think as of right now, they're the only site that hasn't gone live yet. As of the time we're recording the podcast, yeah. that is true. We also mm. have not seen any emails directly from Sony for that sign up they did for pre-orders where you entered your PlayStation ID mm -hmm. and you kind of reserved in air quotes your spot to get a pre-order. LOL. Hopefully those will be going live soon as well as an opportunity to get something directly from Sony instead of one of the other retailers. But this is what I told Steimer because both she and I were stuck in checkout hell on Best Buy. Could not get our cards to, <laughs> to finalize the checkout process like many other people based off my Twitter timeline. Mm -hmm. Is that I don't recall there being a shortage of Xbox Ones or PlayStation 4's last launch. Every store I went to, there was an abundance of consoles available to buy. So I'm guessing that that's going to happen here as well. I'm sure both Microsoft and Sony are going to be looking at these pre-order numbers to kind of gauge how many they're going to release and when they're going to ship. And I do appreciate that Sony came out this week as well and clarified that Bloomberg story about the shortage of units that was supposed yeah. to happen and said, um, I don't know where Bloomberg's getting their data, but that ain't true. <laughs> so uh. thank goodness for that too. Mm -hmm. But anywho, uh, we're going to be playing PlayStation 5s at launch and we'll be talking mm -hmm. a lot more about PlayStation 5 versus Xbox. But I do want to talk about some of the games that were featured in this PlayStation 5 showcase. Brittany, I will let you pick which one you want to talk about first. Oh, gosh. Do I start between Final Fantasy 16 and Resident Evil 8? I don't know. I don't know what to do. Someone choose for me here. You're going to talk pick. about Final Fantasy 16 because it's the first trailer that I pulled up. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, so Final Fantasy 16. Yeah, so this was rumored to make an appearance. We saw a little airship during one of the promo materials for the showcase. And, of course, all of our panties got twisted in a bundle in a very pleasant way. Mm -hmm. And sure as shit, they opened with it. It was interesting, though, because I wasn't sure whether or not this was Final Fantasy fourteen, like a new expansion, or if this was actually Final Fantasy sixteen. It wasn't until I'd say halfway through the trailer that I realized that, hey, this combat does not look very MMO-ish. I think this is Final Fantasy sixteen, and it was. So the guy who is working on it uh, is being produced by Naoki Yoshida. He is the producer mastermind behind Final Fantasy XIV, and he's essentially the man, which my understanding is, who brought the MMO back from the dead back when it was going through some shit. So if you see a lot of FF14 here, that's probably why. And he's also a fan of high fantasy, like more fantasy, less machines, less mech. So that is why when you're looking at this trailer, you can really see that coming through. And I think that's fucking awesome. I'm all for it. Let's go back to like those old Final Fantasy roots. And the only story I was able to grab from watching this trailer is that you are playing as the main character, this short black haired young fellow. <laughs> I don't really know what his name is, <laughs> but he is acting as that little boy we saw earlier, his shield, and he is there to protect him. And obviously there's a crystal involved. There is someone here trying to invade their land because, of course, it's a Final Fantasy game. But what's also interesting is I only see the controlling of one character. I don't see a party of characters. And that's really very, very incredibly unusual for Final Fantasy. In fact, I don't know if there's ever been a Final Fantasy game where you only really control one character unless it's the MMO or whatnot. So it looks pretty. It looks cool. Um, 
I'm excited for it because it's Final Fantasy, but I would say this trailer isn't the most exciting thing ever, but it's there. No, it's interesting because they sent out a press release after the showcase was over, and uh, Naoki Yoshida, a producer on Final Fantasy 16, wrote in the press release, our next big information reveal is scheduled for 2021. So in the meantime, I expect everyone to have fun speculating as we have a lot in store, not only for Final Fantasy 15, but for Final Fantasy 9 too. What? No, sorry, what? Final Fantasy 7. I read the Roman oh, numerals wrong. Fuck, I didn't Andrea. To- Brittany, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I did not mean to get you excited. That's my bad. My bad. <laughs> Final Fantasy 7, which obviously we need to hear more about um so he says needless to say i'll be working hard on both because this was my big question right so i was like hey Mm -hmm. you know what final fantasy 16 certainly something that final fantasy fans look like they're excited about i however am like yo uh so uh what's uh what's happening with final fantasy 7 remake part two are we not talking about that would that not be the thing you want to talk about but it's interesting to see how they're going to roll this out in addition to maintaining the online service for Final Fantasy XIV as well. But we did see them say definitively that this is a PS5 exclusive. So what's funny about that is toward the end of that trailer, it could have been at the very end, if you look on the bottom, there's a little asterisk that says also available on PC. Now, depending on what trailer you're looking at, it's been scrubbed. So you might not even see it on the one you're showing on YouTube. Oh, um, interesting. It's been scrubbed. Yeah. So here's an example from IGN. Square Enix asked IGN to remove mention of PC from their initial Final Fantasy 16 news story. And when asked for a statement, a Square Enix spokesperson said, we have no further information on Final if Final Fantasy 16 will be released in other platforms other than PS5. Yeah. So like usually right there on you, we're watching on YouTube, but there would be a little asterisk that would say also available on PC. But it's no, it's scrubbed. not in this trailer. Yeah, no. Yeah. Scrubbed. And they did the same thing with um, Demon's oh, Souls, there too, I believe. Wait, what? No, that wasn't it. No, it was saying a console exclusive for a limited time. Right the there. only reason I was able to watch it was because we I, I uploaded our live reacts. And so I was looking at what we were watching. And yeah, it's there. If you watch so our live Oh, So that's not what this says. This says this asterisk. Let me show you guys. This says not available on other platforms for a limited time after release on PS5. That does not say PC. That to me indicates that it's multi-platform, time including exclusive. Xbox eventually, mm-hmm. which would make sense. I don't know why Square would make the decision to yep. do <laughs> to do a PS5 exclusive at the beginning of a generation. Yes, when they don't know how the next generation is going to go. But I mean, but no, it's just kind of they've long had a relationship with Sony, so I guess it wouldn't be like horror shocking if they did do this i just think that with the success that final fantasy 7 remake has had um and obviously the success that final fantasy 15 and 14 both had Hmm. it just feels like why limit what fans can enjoy on which platform yeah so the screen um in the original says playstation console exclusive and on the bottom in very very small text also available on pc dun 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 so we're not quite sure where it is available or when. <laughs> PS5, no, no. we are sure that it's available <laughs> on PlayStation 5. That's, we know that. <laughs> According to Sony. All right, the next game that Britney's panties got twisted about. <laughs> Resident Evil Village slash Resident Evil 8 Village. I don't know what they exactly want us to call this. So yeah, we got to see a few more clips of this game. Um, we didn't really get to take too much, get too much information out of it. There's some, like these scenes of the people raiding Ethan's house. It appears that they storm his house, kill Mia, and then they're like, yo, we're taking you somewhere. Or he somehow finds himself in like this weird snowy village. And the more I watch this trailer, and I watched it several times, uh, <laughs> the more I'm getting serious Resident Evil 4 slash RE7 vibes, like a mix of the two, which is really interesting. Uh, Resident Evil 4 had a much different play style than like the classic Resident Evils that we're so accustomed to. And, you know, I think I'm all here for it. While Resident Evil 4 isn't my favorite, favorite Resident Evil game um, I think as long as they keep remastering some of those oldie but goodies I'm getting my old fix so I'm happy for Capcom to kind of explore these different realms within Resident Evil and Resident Evil has always been fucking weird like let's be real so in this trailer you see like this big old honking ogre thing I don't even know what the hell that is the enemies for the most part look part werewolf and they have they're barefoot in the snow and they kind of have like clawy hands and like these crazy beady bright eyes and uh yeah, we really still don't know much about this. I know we're going to get more at TGS in, gosh, just a few weeks. And other than that, like, it looks creepy and weird as hell. And I'm here for the ride. 
At the end, though, we see like a merchant, and the merchant says, if it's just looking, window shop away, or something like that. And the merchant reminds me a lot of the merchant from Resident Evil 4 as well. So I think there's going to be some sort of ties in, tie in, like, spiritually. You know, like, not, like, directly. But anywho, let's go. Let's fucking go. Everyone thought this game looked creepy. They're like, nope, nope, nope. But I'm yeah. waiting for it. That, that, I oh, was yeah. one of those people who were saying, nope, 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 in the chat. I, didn't, I was not a, not a fan of the horror games. And I was creeped out even by this trailer. And honestly, like, the the little vignettes that they showed of, like, some sort of storytelling or, mm, like, mm-hmm. the, the hand-drawn animation made it creepier somehow. Like, how could you make Resident <laughs> Evil even more creepy than it already is? They did it. And I didn't, no, I didn't totally. appreciate that. But I know some people will. <laughs> I, I am that person. I'm going to interrupt because I am very concerned about what's happening with Ree's audio levels in Reaper. Okay. Um, because oh. they are incredibly low, and it makes me worried that her microphone is not plugged in properly. Okay. So I can hear her fine in the mix in OBS. Okay. But Reaper is not picking it up. Or huh. Just talking really that low, which I don't know. Seems impossible. <laughs> Mm-mm. Isn't tech just great? Is that light green or dark green? Uh, this is... I don't know what the two look like separately. I think it's dark. I think it's dark green. Yeah. Hello, hello, hello. Can you hear me now? Is anything going wrong with the audio? Are the levels okay? I mean, like they sounded okay while we were doing the test, and I listened to it back. But uh huh. But you see what I'm talking about, right? The difference. Yeah, I mean, in it, the waveform. It looks ridiculously low. Don't know why. <laughs> let me let me show you, Britt, what it looks like. <laughs> oh, what the fuck? This is this is re right here. Uh oh. <laughs> I don't know why. So I just boosted you, okay. so that'll help. Let me just turn these FX off, and then I will add them later. But I guess just make sure you're staying very close to the yeah. microphone. I okay. mean, my waveform is always the biggest because I'm fucking just I'm just loud. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> I was like, I like looked over. I was like, oh, I should just check Reaper since we're starting. And then I was like, oh no, what's happening? But if I need to use the the OBS audio, I will. Okay, so cool. we will just pick up after Resident Evil 7 talk, or sorry, Resident Evil Village talk. Mm, right. Is there anything else you guys wanted to say about Resident Evil? No. No. Okay. <laughs> no. <said>. No. <laughs> no. Um, okay. <clears throat> Next up, because let's be honest, I'm done talking about the scary game. I want to talk about Spider-Man Miles Morales. So we obviously knew this game was coming this year. They once again confirmed that, yes, it is holiday 2020. We did not get a release date, though, which I feel is a little concerning when we're really close. We're, we're sneezing at holiday 2020, which is kind of exciting from a, oh, my gosh, 2020 is almost over perspective. <laughs> but I'm worried that it's this game has potential to maybe slip. I hope it does not because to me right now, this is like their tentpole launch title. Yeah, absolutely. And it is nice that it's still available on PS4 for those who cannot get a console or can't afford one because, again, it's 2020. Let's be real. Um, but I think it's really good. It, it looks really good from what we saw, like the gameplay, which we'll, we'll see in this clip in a, a few minutes here, um, felt really familiar um, based on some of the other titles that we've seen. And I, I'm excited. I think the look of these enemies is really cool. I think their moveset's really interesting. And the way that Miles gets powered up here and, you know, it becomes part of the gameplay. It was, it was a really neat way to introduce this character to a lot of people who hadn't seen him yet. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I think it just looks pumping. amazing. It does. Yeah. Also, yeah. shout out to the Puerto Rican flag in the very beginning. That was really cool to see. Oh, nice. I didn't even notice that. Yeah, it was That's... outside his door or outside on the, the scaffolding. 
That's a nice touch. Yeah. Yeah, I think the graphics here look beautiful. I was looking at all the lighting effects, all the particle effects you're seeing here in this combat. Of course, youtube.com slash what's good games if you guys want to check out that B-roll. If you guys did not catch the PlayStation 5 showcase, we've been showing a lot of the B-roll we've been talking about so far. I mean, this is just, to me, an extension of what Insomniac started with uh, Marvel Spider-Man, right, for PS4. And I think that this game is going to play great. We still don't have a clear answer from an insomniac about the size of this game but honestly i don't care i don't care how <laughs> mm -hmm. long this game is this game could be five hours long and i would want to play it could be 75 hours long and i'll want to play yeah because i think that this game looks phenomenal and i think this is really what playstation should roll out to showcase the power of their brand new box Mm. Yeah, and, and correct me if I'm wrong. The price is at forty nine ninety nine, right? For yes, the base so th game that was part of the news that came out post PS Five showcase as well, which was also a little like head scratcher. Mm -hmm. The uh -huh. confirmation that there's going to be a range of prices right. for first party PlayStation games from forty nine ninety nine to seventy nine ninety nine, I believe, or was mm -hmm. it sixty nine ninety nine? So yeah. yeah, Sony revealed that yeah, full price first party will be sixty nine ninety nine right at launch, and then yeah, Miles Morales will come in at fifty dollars, or you can pay seventy for the Ultimate Edition. Mm -hmm. Mm, no, it looks real good. It just looks like a, you know, Spider-Man really was one of those feel-good games. And I, as I've mentioned, although I have started re reading comics, the Marvel's comics, because Avengers turned, yeah, Avengers turned me on to it. So now I have my little comic app every night and I'm just like reading through like, you know, little pages and whatnot. I love it. <laughs> um, I, uh, it just made me feel really good. It was just kind of a feel-good game, like I said. And I think the upbeat, and granted, different Spider-Man, I know that. But I think so far what I've seen in Miles Morales, he just seems like a very endearing young chap. I'm have you, Brittany, yet watched? No, I haven't. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> but now that you've been checking out the comics, I think you would really enjoy, I think you would really enjoy Into the Spider-Verse. That's all I'm going to say. I know. It. It's one of the best Spider-Man movies, period. It's probably one of the best maybe. animated movies yeah. ever made. One of the best Marvel movies, maybe. <gasps> yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Okay. It's up there. It's good. Um, cool. Well, this is the game I think everyone's excited about this fall for PlayStation exclusives. Obviously, there's the, a couple other things coming in the pipeline for them this fall. Um, they confirmed, excuse me, <coughs> pardon me, <laughs> they confirmed that they're going to have a bunch of, wait, um, you know what? Let me, let me not skip right ahead to that. Let's keep talking about a couple of other games. <laughs> um, let's see here. Uh, where should I pick up? Talking about... This game being exciting. This game is exciting. Also, shout out to the, the Tobey Maguire bus moment that they do in, in several of the Spider-Man movies now when he's holding something on either side and just like <laughs> sheer force of will. Oh, I love that. It was some <laughs> nice callback. It was a really nice callback. Yeah, and he saves the day in this trailer as, as Spider-Man does. He does. It's um, a good trailer. If we could, I would really like to talk about Hogwarts. Yes. Oh, yeah. I'm so glad you brought that up. I have that trailer queued and ready to go. So I have questions. I have lots and lots of questions about this. Like, <laughs> okay, is this a single player is a multiplayer? Is it open world? Is it like Far Cry Assassin's Creed style? Or is this like full on MMO? Like, I, I don't I'm glad understand. you asked, Ree. I don't I know what I'm playing here. And I want all of the magic. <laughs> I just need to know how it's going to happen. <laughs> So it's funny because GameSpot called it an MMO in their tweet. And as of now, like the tweet is still up. This is not an MMO. So via the official press release, Warner Bros. Games today announced Hogwarts Legacy, an open world single player action role playing video game sent set in the 1800s wizarding world. Players will experience life as a student at Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry like never before as they live the unwritten and embark on a dangerous journey to uncover a hidden truth of the wizarding world. Players will also encounter missions and scenarios that will pose difficult choices and determine what they stand for. So yeah, I mean, this looks freaking great. I don't know it half does. of what I'm seeing right now, but it looks like right up my alley. I was so excited when we finally saw Harry Potter Hogwarts Legacy on screen. A lot of Harry Potter fans like myself have been really waiting for this reveal after the, the leak two years ago. And I was like very pumped, very pumped. And then I was like, but, but I feel like I, what, where's the information though? I want to <laughs> see more. Like, yeah. show me more. And this is another classic case of them kind of being very sneaky with gameplay and intermixing gameplay and cutscenes. And it's tough to tell 
what is the gameplay and what's the cutscene when you don't have a HUD on screen communicating mm -hmm. player information back to the player, right? So there was a blog post on Sony's website after the showcase and Avalanche added a little bit more details about kind of what we're going to see here. So Avalanche's head writer, or sorry, the head of story, Adrian Ropp, um, writes... The port key games label gave us a unique opportunity to return to Hogwarts during a different era. We are always asking ourselves how we can draw from the rich library of characters, creatures, themes, and imagine how those details would influence the school more than a century before Harry Potter's arrival. Who was the headmaster? What challenges did students face? What influenced their society before Tom Riddle, before Newt Scamander? I'd like to say that what we are giving fans is something familiar in a way they have never seen. Mm -hmm. okay. Which I They're find skeletons. interesting, a very strong choice, but also probably the smartest choice because we saw what happened in the lead up to Marvel's Avengers with fans oh, really struggling with not having the MCU faces that they know and love. And I believe Harry Potter fans would go through the exact same thing if Avalanche had decided to not go with the actors of the Harry Potter film series, but had chosen to take some of those characters. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh -huh. I'm glad that they are kind of cutting that off at the pass and saying, we believe that the universe around the Harry Potter series is rich and has all of these other stories that have yet to be told. And we want to tell some of those stories. And I think that that's probably the smartest thing for them to do. Yeah. Agreed. Safest bet for agreed. sure. Agreed. It's an easy way uh -huh. to do canon without stepping in it. Absolutely. Yeah. And I know that some of you have reached out and asked us to give comments about everything going on with J.K. Rowling, and I will just echo what I said before. I encourage you to go see Daniel Radcliffe's statement on J.K. Rowling and how he encourages you to maintain your fandom and suggest ways that you can you know, address what's happening with her controversy, but also maintaining your love for what that series means to you. And he says it far better than I ever could, or could, excuse me. So we'll just once again refer you to the star of the Harry <laughs> Potter film uh, franchise, <laughs> Mr. Daniel Radcliffe. Um, all right, but we won't find out more until, until later. Someday. Someday. <laughs> Someday this game will come out. I mean, they say 2021, but ah. uh, do we believe that? Uh, I want to be optimistic, Ollie, because I feel like, you know, we need all the all, all the optimism right now. But yeah, mm. it, it's hard. It's hard to not just expect delays at this point, especially in this yeah. year. And who knows what exactly. last year will look like. Yes. Yeah, we'll get it sometime. <laughs> well, we'll we'll keep our fingers crossed, everybody. Um, so we're just going to quickly go over some of the other things that happened in the showcase today. Uh, we saw another look at Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War. They announced that there's going to be a multiplayer alpha happening this weekend. So if you're listening to the podcast, you may be able to get in on PlayStation 4 only. Of course, we know that Call of Duty has long had a marketing deal with PlayStation 4. Clearly, that's continuing into the, at least the first couple of years of the PS5. Uh, so Sorry, Xbox and PC fans. You'll get your time eventually, I would imagine. <laughs> Call of Duty is usually pretty generous with their betas leading up to launch. So that's September 18th through the 20th. And I'll be talking about my hands-on with the multiplayer in the next segment of the podcast. We got another deeper dive at Deathloop, that PlayStation 5 exclusive coming from Arcane and Bethesda, which looked amazing. It looked really, really cool. Yeah, yeah that, that asset made me more interested in playing Deathloop. Like, I love how that had, like, the Hitman aspect of, like, setting up your target gets to be in the right place at the right time so that you could pull off like the perfect kill like that really really hooked me I am this is at the top of my list now after watching that yeah, yeah I'm into it I love the riff that they're doing on Hitman but in the style of other arcane games that have come before of course Dishonored and mm -hmm. the one in space whose name I'm blanking on <laughs> oh my god space. Pray. pray pray that's the one. Yes. And Pray. then like that can constant pressure of having another assassin constantly coming for you. Like that, mm -hmm. that really appealed to me. I'm, I'm excited Ooh, see, about that, that clench That makes me clench more than like a horror game. You don't like being no clenched? Always <laughs> oh, eh? no, no, something's always chasing me, man. Ugh. Bear. Ugh. Ugh. 
And then we also got, finally, got the confirmation that, yes, indeed, the Demon Souls remake is finally happening. So we knew that it was announced already, but we hadn't really gotten a look at it. And PlayStation gave a nice, lengthy look at gameplay of the Demon Souls remake, which is said to be coming this year, supposedly a launch <laughs> title, but again, did not get a clear answer on what's the date of this exactly? What yeah, platform is this so coming weird. on exactly? <sighs> oh. I don't know. This is the launch game I think a lot of people freaking want. And so you would have thought if it was going to be ready for launch, why wouldn't you have touted that at the end of this trailer? Yeah. I don't know, friends. It day, day one. Yeah. Play it, mm. play it as soon oh, as well. you get your console. They, make the, they made this game look real easy, though, I'll tell you that much. Oh, yeah. my gosh, did they ever? I was like, <laughs> how many times did he practice this scene, or she, or they? Uh, because they obviously did not die. Well, not until the very end, of course. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then the demo was over, and then we were like, oh, yeah, that that now now it feels real. That yeah. You just say, you died over and over again. Uh, we also saw DMC5 Special Edition that's going to be available on PlayStation 5 at launch. We also are getting... Odd World Soulstorm on PS5, not a launch title, unconfirmed release date, but Lauren Lanning came on, said a few words, said, yeah, we're bringing Odd World to play a, uh, PlayStation 5. And then we got a look at Five Nights at Freddy's <laughs> Security <laughs> Breach, which was like, at first, I think we all were like, what the heck is this game? And then you saw the bear and was like, oh, boy. So, yeah, the, the voice is kind of what started to clue me into it and what they were saying because it was similar to what what plot line exists in other Five Nights at Freddy's games. <laughs> but yeah, uh, hella creepy. Um, probably won't play it. Greg, but for people who are excited, first, I thought it was... Give it some serious Bioshock vibes. I'm like, oh, this looks kind of Bioshocky. And then you hear, like you said, read that voice, being like, "Sorry, I got like mean earlier. It was a glitch, but mm -hmm. I'm fine now." Yeah. And then you hear this, like this poor little kid is like shit in his pants somewhere, <laughs> probably hiding somewhere. And you hear this voice saying, "I think she's found us." And then boom, jump scare. Yeah. I don't know. I think it looks cool. This game was uh, actually, I think, leaked by Funko a while back. They released oh. some Funko Pops <laughs> and they a little prematurely leaked them, and so. But it's cool to actually see this game. I wonder if you actually walk around in it. It's kind of what it looks like, doesn't it? It seems like it. And, and it's hard to tell yeah. with the cinematic, you know, like all the times we've been baited and switched. But it's true. It, it looked like a, you know, full 3D environment that you could explore with lots of different like motifs and different rooms. And, you know, that would be an interesting direction to take the Five Nights at Freddy's franchise. And I don't know if they're thinking about VR, but Ugh. obviously that would be really scary. And again, I, know. I won't play it. But for I'm certain people, to, that could be their jam. I'm talking a tough game right now, but again, if it's all about you getting fucking stalked by this anime, nope, it's not happening. Animatronics? I can't do it. No? Nope. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. I feel like you always talk a tough game, though, and you come out on top because you're Brit. And Thanks. you scream at terror with your eyes open. But there is some shit I don't fuck with, and Five Nights at Freddy's is one of those things. <laughs> <laughs> well, then maybe I'll have to fuck with Five Nights at Freddy's in The Return of Lights Off. Ooh. Yes, mm. please, please, literally, please. I have yes. all of them downloaded in my Steam account, and I've just been too chicken to play them. Now's uh, the I perfect mean, I, time. Yeah. <laughs> Do it. Okay. Um, just wrapping up here, we have the PlayStation Plus collection that was revealed as well. These are the genre-defining games as defined by Sony from the PS4 generation that are going to be available as an added benefit to your PlayStation Plus membership. So if you have the premium membership that you're paying $59.99 a year for, or if you get special deals, if you're using coupons and stuff, you're going to be able to now play God of War, uh, Monster Hunter World, Final Fantasy 15, Fallout 4, Uncharted 4, Mortal Kombat X, Ratchet and Clank, Days Gone, Until Dawn, Detroit, Battlefield 1, Infamous Second Son, Batman Arkham Knight, Last Guardian, The Last of Us Remastered, Persona 5, Resident Evil 7, Bloodborne. Wow, That's a good nailed list. it. That's a really good list. It's a great That's list. That's a good list. Yeah. Solid. Lots All included with your PlayStation Plus membership yeah. at launch for PS5. Everybody wants those subs, yo. <laughs> I mean, it's great. And then, last, but certainly not least, we get a little stinger. At the Ooh. end, Jim Ryan comes on and is like, everyone's excited. Yeah, PS5. But wait, there's more. <laughs> Ooh. And this is when we got... The music, the soothing dulcet sounds <laughs> of Kratos, and a confirmation that God of War is returning surprisingly in 2021. Yeah, well, that yeah. felt soon. 
I was I was shocked when that date came up. I was like, okay, we all knew that Sony Santa Monica was definitely going to make another game. Of course, Obviously. that game was a masterpiece. And, you know, Corey Barlog has to go back to work at some point. <laughs> uh, clearly, he's been where he's been working. Um, but yeah, so Ragnarok is coming is what we see on screen here. No other details at all. Nothing. Just the logo, some snow, and a date mm. to salivate over. Yep. Mm, yeah, that's it. 2021, though, was very surprising. Very yeah. exciting, but very surprising. You'd, You'd love to think? see it. Bring it. Yeah. I'm ready. Come back, Kratos. Boy. I want to see what's going down with Atreus. Boy. Boy. It makes me want to go back and play it, honestly. I Maybe know. what I'll do is I'll wait and mm-hmm. I'll play God of War on PS5 as part of the PlayStation Plus collection and yep. see it oh. in all of that beautiful 4K so, glory. Because like, we didn't have a 4K traced. TV yet when That's we played true. God of War. Yeah. That was back in 2018, man. Ancient oh. times. So long ago. Mm. Yeah. Yep. We were so innocent. We were. Mm. <laughs> Indeed. Yeah. All right, that's going to do it for our PlayStation recap. There were a couple of other like tidbits of information that kind of trickled down after the showcase was over. Not sure how many of them we want to go over. Mm. We've gone over most of them. Yeah. We do have one last question from a patron, Brittany, Gabe. Gabe Hewitt asks, now that we know the prices, who do we think is going to sell more units this holiday season? Is that answer the same for lifetime sales? Of course it's not, Gabe. (laughs) Wait, how could it be? (laughs) I don't know, honestly. It's tough to say because the Xbox Game Pass proposition, along with that $2.99 intro price, is really appealing to a lot of gamers. Mm -hmm. But I think the overall library that PlayStation 5 is going to have at launch beats what Xbox is going to have. If, as long as we take all of the third-party games out that are going to be yeah. available on both, if you look at only what you can play purely on Xbox, not on PC, just Xbox and just PlayStation, I still think PlayStation's winning. Yeah, oh, yeah. I would agree. I think whoever ends up selling more is whoever has more in stock, obviously, because people are going to just want to get something. I mean, that's that's the most pragmatic <laughs> that's, answer I've heard that's, yet. Yeah. Uh, yeah (laughs) mic drop let's go (laughs) segment two (laughs) well Gabe thank you so much for your question only time will tell friend and on that note I have a quick word from our first sponsor of the show Bespoke Post as we settle into this new normal version of summer or really the end of summer Bespoke Post is here with a customized box of awesome collection for everyone, guaranteed to upgrade your life. Bespoke Post only sends guys the best stuff every month, no matter what you're into. Box of Awesome has you covered. From style and grooming goods to barware, cooking tools, and outdoor gear, Box of Awesome has carefully built collections for every part of your life. If COVID has you feeling stressed, well, maybe check out that Soothe Box with items like bath salt, a sugar scrub, and a candle. Or maybe you want to make some quarantine cocktails Tales with the Island Box that features a tropical passion fruit syrup and some really fun pineapple tumblers. They even have a Cheers Box with a really cool amber glass growler and pint glasses. To get started, you got to take the quiz at boxofawesome.com. Your answers will help them pick the right Box of Awesome for you. They release new boxes every month across tons of different categories. It's free to sign up and you can skip a month at any time or cancel any time. Each box costs only 45 bucks, but has over $70 worth of gear inside. If you want to get your own box of awesome with 20% off that first monthly box, you're going to need to sign up at boxofawesome.com and enter our code WGG when you check out. That's boxofawesome.com. Use code WGG for 20% off your first box. I can't believe we're talking about this Mass Effect Remastered trilogy again, especially (laughs) after we had the amazing, talented, lovely human being that is Jennifer Hale on the Monday show. If you guys missed Monday's episode with Jennifer, she was phenomenal. And also the voice of Femship. Yes. The better ship. The best ship. The better ship. The best ship. That's right. I said it. (laughs) I said it. It's true. It's true. true. Okay, so yeah, uh, more news. So this comes from GameSpot. Mass Effect Trilogy Remastered spotted at retailer for PS4, Xbox One, and Switch. And the article opens up with the following. 
Shortly after this listing was spotted, the page appears to have been removed from the retailer's website. We will update as we learn more information. And now on to the original story. A Portuguese game retailer has listed the Mass Effect trilogy remastered for all current gen consoles, but Electronic Arts has not announced the games officially. The website Gaming Replay had listings available for the Mass Effect trilogy remastered on PS4, Xbox One, and Nintendo Switch. Curiously, the Switch version was listed for slightly less than the other two, which usually isn't the case for releases like this. It listed an October release window, which would be unusually quick for a game that hasn't been announced yet. The box art for the games doesn't look final, and the logo was actually already used back when the three games came to PlayStation 3, Xbox 360, and PC, and Mass Effect Andromeda was absent from the collection. This just gets weirder and weirder. I think I really am holding out hope that this is real, that they're just going to shadow drop it on N7 Day. Uh, no, here, yeah. I have a theory. Okay, lay it on the Strap in, ladies. Hold on to your asses. Okay, okay so go. there is a Nintendo Partner Mini Direct tomorrow. Okay. And it's at 7 a.m., Thursday, September 17th. And now Nintendo, in the past, has just been self-dropping everything left and right. They've been uploading to YouTube these pre-recorded things. They haven't been making a spectacle of it. But this is going to be live-streamed, and they're promoting it 24 hours in advance. What are mm. the odds that the Mass Effect Trilogy remaster is announced during Nintendo's mini partner direct? Because this year is fucking weird. Nothing that would, would surprise be, me anymore. <laughs> that would be a jaw-dropping, like, wow, that's a choice. Yeah. Yeah. That would be a choice. It would because be Switch choice. would not be my preferred platform to play <laughs> Mass, Mass Effect, Effect on. <laughs> not at all. Not at all. But depending on how well they do the remastered trilogy, it could be it could be good. I mean, you could play The Witcher 3 on your Switch now, so yeah, that's, that's a I'm thing. That's true. You I played all of that. Diablo 3 on my Switch. It could happen. It's a theory, Britt. It's a good happen. So what do you think about this October release date, though? I think that that can't possibly be right. I just yeah. don't foresee a world in which EA, the marketing behemoth that is EA, would release a game like that with no like marketing lead up. Yeah, zero runway. And also, when yeah. you're that close to N7 day, why don't you just hold it and release it then? Or at least release it that week, right? Because November 7th is a Saturday, technically, this year. So they could t release it maybe that Friday um, in mm. advance of Saturday release if they wanted to, like, you know, released on November 6th and then, you know, in Get celebration of in seven day. Yeah. But that Before to me seems new like a better, uh, yeah, seems like a better thing to do. Yeah. <sighs> well, I think it's going to happen, ladies. It's just when's it going to appear officially? And who knows? Maybe it'll appear on a Nintendo Direct tomorrow. <laughs> Maybe. I honestly hope so. I'm tired of covering these leaks. <laughs> <Just> stop <laughs> teasing me. All right? Like, I just, I need it. I need the game. Just, just give it to me. <clears throat> Ask nicely, please. <laughs> <laughs> How could you resist EA? Just do it. Just do it. <laughs> okay, last <sighs> story. Oculus Quest 2 is available for pre-order. If you didn't have your tizzies up enough over PS5 pre-orders, guess what? You can now get <laughs> more hardware. Tizzies. I don't know what that is. Tizzy's. What's a I don't, tizzy's up? I, I don't know. It just, it just <laughs> happened. It just Raise happened, okay? Uh, IGN writes, the Oculus Quest 2 VR headset is now up for pre-order, and it's shipping out on October 13th. The Quest 2 improves upon its predecessor in a variety of ways, which I'm not going to list out right now. But the Quest 2 model starts at $300 for the 64 gigabyte and $400 for the 256 gigabyte and a full $100 cheaper than the original Oculus Quest was, for those of you who are keeping track. Mm. Also, we discovered via another story that Ubisoft has announced two new VR games based on Assassin's Creed and Splinter Cell that are going to be coming to the Oculus, respectively during today's Facebook Connect event. So that was obviously earlier this week. Ubisoft Red Storm, the company's division focused on Tom Clancy, will lead development on both Splinter Cell and Assassin's Creed VR with additional support from Ubisoft Reflections, Ubisoft Ubisoft Dusseldorf and Ubisoft Mumbai. Hmm. All right. Well, All right. Now you get to stab people in VR. In VR. I you can feel play bad another... for Splinter Cell game fans. Yeah. I feel like they're getting every Splinter Cell game than what they actually want. Exactly. You know I mean? Just another not Splinter Cell game. <laughs> yeah. I, don't, I mean, I don't follow the franchise, so I don't know what's up with that. But 
is a new one is a new one coming have they confirmed anything on that i don't know we no like you're crickets. getting everywhere mm. it is a weird choice and i wonder if it's because the licensing rights are tied up somewhere else hmm. maybe they're making or developing a movie or maybe they're developing a tv series like a netflix series or something or maybe like ubisoft's hmm. licensing for the games part of splinter cell is just not their focus right now. Maybe they're like, yo, have you not seen how many games we're making? We kind of got our hands full right now, yo. Fair. So That is fair. But I don't, yeah, it, I'm with you, Britt. Sorry, Splinter Cell fans. Sorry, y'all. You'll get a game maybe never, actually. Maybe <laughs> never. We'll maybe it's just time to come to terms with that. We'll see him in Rainbow uh, Six. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. Anywho, we have one last bullet point, Brittany. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I'm really excited about this one. So Donkey Kong Country 2 Diddy's Conquest is coming to Nintendo <laughs> Switch Online on September 23rd. Some other games are coming as well. Mario Super Picross, The Peacekeepers, and NES's SCAT Special Cybernetic Attack Team. SCAT is not also a word for shit, I digress. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think this is really cool. Donkey Kong Country 2 is a fantastic Donkey Kong game. I think it's my favorite. I have more nostalgia for Country, but Country 2 is just like mm, so good. Uh, yeah, exciting news. So if you haven't fired up your Nintendo Switch Online free game archive, whatever the fuck it's called, <laughs> in a while, now you have a reason to. Yeah. That's a good point. I haven't fired mine up in a really long time. I don't think I ever have. Oh. It's never too late to start, Re. <laughs> no, you got Super Mario All-Stars on there. You got Donkey Kong Country. Now you're going to get two pretty soon. Yeah. Good I'm going to get into it. All for just $20 a year. Great Boom. price. Great Boom. value. I mean, let's be honest. They can't charge us more than that. <laughs> we tolerate that price. <laughs> <laughs> we tolerate. That's a perfect way of putting it. Yeah. Yeah. How you know many fucking times I've bought those games? How many oh. copies of Donkey Kong Country I have, physical and digital? Yes. Yeah. 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 Oh, boy. On that note, we're going to take our first break of the show and really our only break of the show. It's just a two-segment show this week, you guys. When we come back, we're going to be talking about what we've been playing, including my hands-on time with Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War multiplayer, and both Rhi and I got to play some Fuser. Yeah, we did. And we weren't killing each other in Among Us. <laughs> yeah. All right, we'll be right back. All right, so we've got a couple of announcements, everybody. Real quick, we've got the Patreon exclusive streams happening Saturday, September 19th, which we mentioned at the top of the show. Q&A kicks off at 1 p.m. Pacific time, and Among Us kicks off at 3 p.m. So if you want the chance to play with us, you got to have it installed. It is cross-play on Steam or on your phone. You can play on your phone. Did you know that? You yeah. can play on your phone. It's actually pretty good. Yeah. It's not bad. It's going to be fun. And you guys may have seen that What's Good Games has a team on Tiltify underneath the Able Gamers banner. So our good friend Steve Spawn turned 40 this week. Congratulations, Steve. And to celebrate, he decided to shoot for the fences. Swing for the fences, shoot for the moon. And he <laughs> wants to raise $1 million for Able Gamers so everybody can game. He's using that hashtag spawn together. And What's Good Games has a team. You guys want to check out that information. I've tweeted about it, retweeted about it, Brit's tweeted about it, What's Good underscore Games has tweeted about it. And we are going to be doing Tiltify activations on our Twitch channel. But if you guys want to help support everything Able Gamers does, you can make your donation under the What's Good Games banner. We have a goal of $5,000, and currently we're at over 2000 already? Ooh. Yeah. This okay. is amazing. Almost halfway there. So exciting. Yeah. So hopefully we can reach that goal, smash that goal. I would like to smash it. Yeah, let's smash it. Boom. Let's smash. And then uh, Lights Off is back with our first episode Monday, September 21st at 6 p.m. Pacific time. So Rihanna and I were streaming Halo. We're going to just put that on pause for a little bit <laughs> and Brittany and I are going to be tag teaming some episodes we're going to be bringing on some special guests having some friends and we're going to be playing some spooky games in the dark to celebrate the return of Halloween season oh it's going to be so good I found some real pant shitters oh I awesome to play. that's Love exactly that. how I want to spend my night with me, baby girl, we can play some games. We can outrun all the dead, creepy women that are trying to kill us with their black, strangly hair. It's gonna be fantastic. Okay. You know, like, yeah, it's gonna be fantastic. You know, if hair covered, so. face, the white gown, we're chasing you. Oh yeah, have fun. All right, awesome. <laughs> Three. <laughs> and one more thing, we are incredibly excited to finally confirm 
that What's Good Games is joining our friends at roosterteeth.com on the Friends of Rooster Teeth section. So we announced this at the Wonderful World of Games journalism panel that we did just yesterday at RTX at Home. If you guys missed that, you can check that out on the RTX website. And we have been working on this behind the scenes for quite a few months. You guys may have remembered we technically revealed this way back in May? around our anniversary and then you know pandemic happened and rooster teeth changed some technical things on the back end as so we kind of put a pause we pumped the brakes <laughs> and now we are super excited to be joining other friends of rooster teeth like easy allies you can start catching what's good games at roosterteeth.com starting october 5th <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. It's the second segment of the What's Good Games podcast. This is where we talk about what we've been playing. But before we get to that, I want to let you know this segment is brought to you by ExpressVPN. There are tons of VPN providers out there. You've probably heard of a couple of them, and some of you may have even used a VPN before. But I like to do research on our sponsors, like y'all know, which is why we can say with full confidence that ExpressVPN is the best VPN on the market, and here's why. So ExpressVPN does not log your data. Lots of really cheap or even free VPNs are a little sketchy, and they make money by selling your data to ad companies. I know. The gall. <laughs> ExpressVPN, though, developed technology called Trusted Server that makes it impossible for their servers to log any of your info. Second, of course, is speed. I've tried lots of VPNs in the past working in digital video, and many of them have slow connections that just weigh you down and make your devices sluggish. Now, I've been using ExpressVPN for about five months now, roughly, and my internet speeds are super fast. Now, the last thing that really sets ExpressVPN apart from the other VPNs that are out there is streaming HD quality videos with zero lag. You really don't want to have lag when you're trying to get your anime fix on. ExpressVPN really sets themselves apart from other VPNs, of course, with how easy they are to use. And unlike other VPNs, you don't have to input or program anything. You just fire up the app, hit the connected button, and boom, even your grandparents could do it. And we all know our grandparents are technologically challenged. Well, except for maybe Britney's. She's pretty boss. And it's not just me saying this, you guys. If you don't want to take my word for it, I get it. Uh, maybe you want to take the word of Wired, The Verge, CNET, and many other tech experts that rate ExpressVPN the number one VPN in the world. So to protect yourself with the VPN that we use here at What's Good Games, use our link expressvpn.com slash what's good games to get an extra three months free on a one year package today. That's expressvpn.com slash what's good games. Visit expressvpn.com slash what's good games to learn more details. Today's episode of What's Good Games is also brought to you by Hawthorne. I love smelling good. Brittany loves smelling good, but we both pale in comparison to the smell good factor of one Christine Steimer. And mm -hmm. Britt and I talk about this all the time, mm -hmm. don't we, Britt? Yeah, it's true. It's very, very true. We can only hope to smell as good as Steimer does someday. <laughs> we will aspire to Steimer smelling goals. If you want to aspire to smell as good as one Christine Steimer, then I highly encourage you to check out Hawthorne.co. It's a fantastic website that has all different kinds of products to help make you smell fantastic. Did I say fantastic? Take a shot every time I say fantastic. <laughs> they've got body wash. They've got hand wash, face wash, shampoo, cologne, all of the things that you need to feel your best. So I sat down with my wonderful husband, John, so we could take the quiz together because you go to their website and you do this little quiz and it asks you a bunch of questions. And not long after that, a bunch of products arrived and they looked sleek and smelled great. If you want to smell as good as John and Steimer, and trust me, I get it. Britt and I talk about it all the time, like in this ad, you need to go to Hawthorne.co, take a quick two minute quiz and Hawthorne's going to tell you what scents are good for you and what products they recommend that you order. And the best news, it's totally risk-free and it's got free returns and free shipping. I mean, that's a win-win, everybody. So you got to go to hawthorne.co. That's hawthorne.co. That's hawthorne with an E. So H-A-W-T-H-O-R-N-E dot C-O. And mm -hmm. use our promo code, what's good, to get 10% off your first purchase. That's hawthorne.co. And use our code, what's good, to get 10% off your purchase. Hawthorne.co. 
All right, everybody, let's talk about what we've been playing. So I had the opportunity a couple of weeks back to go to an online virtual preview event for Fuser. That is Harmonix DJ mixing game that we saw back at PAX East earlier this year. And I got to try a little bit. And now they gave me a deeper dive look. So the embargo lifted last week, but because I was out, I didn't get a chance to talk to it, uh, talk about it. And I got a chance to show Rihanna the game. So I want to show you guys a little bit of the gameplay that they sent over. So the folks at Harmonix and NCSoft sent over some B-roll. And what I think is really cool about what they're doing with Fuser is that it's just taking the formula that Harmonix really is known for with beat matching and rhythm, and they're just kind of elevating it and really kind of taking what they did with drop mix and taking it one step further. So if you guys are kind of lost and you're like, what the heck is Fuser? <laughs> if you ever have been to a concert, a wedding, a high school dance, you've probably heard a DJ play. <laughs> and this game is all about DJing, mixing individual tracks from different licensed songs and creating your own unique mixes. So this game is going to be coming out for PS4, Xbox One, PC, and Switch. Now, I asked them very specifically about PS5 and Series X, and they were like, not talking about that yet, <laughs> not being clear about if that's coming. I have to imagine that they're going to be putting out a version of the game, but unclear at this time. So we got to see the campaign. It's got different stages. As you can see here, we've got a DJ going through their crate, mixing some stuff together. Each of the different stages in the campaign are linked to promoters and these promoters each have their own individual personalities. They're like NPCs in the game. And then each stage kind of reminds me a little bit of the different tours that you did in Rock Band and the different cities you would go to and how they each had their own kind of challenges that you needed to overcome in addition to, of course, playing through the songs and getting high scores. So there is no difficulty scaling in this game. So traditionally in harmonics games, you know, there's, you know, easy, medium, hard, and expert. Not so here because of the way that the beat matching works. The team at harmonics, when they were talking to me about the game, said that it just didn't really make sense to have a difficulty scale and that it didn't feel intuitive for the style of play specifically. So I thought that that was really interesting. Um, they're going to be launching with over 100 licensed songs when the game goes live. And some of the songs are just, ugh, it's just such an eclectic mix. And I would love, Re, for you to jump in and kind of tell me about your yeah. time getting a little bit of hands-on with the build that they showed us. Yeah, um, during my playthrough uh, today, or not today, yesterday, uh, I did two different levels and just wanted to see the difference between the the type of kit that the the game automatically outfits you with. So you get a a number of different tracks that you can use uh, different instruments and vocal lines from, and depending on what area you're with or, or area you're playing or what uh, what promoter you're with. Uh, it'll give you a different type of, I guess, loadout is the best way I could describe mm -hmm. it. So uh, for the first one that I played, uh, it was pretty traditional, you know, some club pop music. Um, and the promoter was saying like, oh, yeah, this this crowd really loves like up tempo numbers. You know, they might throw some requests your way. And they kind of gave me an idea of what to expect as I was going into that set. And um and the second one that I played, it was definitely more EDM focused. It had a totally different genre of tracks that, that they gave me to play with. And they also, the crowd requested specific types of effects on different tracks. So depending on where you're playing, you'll have different types of requests coming from the crowd, which earns you extra points if you're able to meet those requests. And um, they'll prefer different tempos, different types of music, different um, eras of music, different genres. So it was, it was interesting to see the differences between the different stages and, and the promoters, as you said, Andrea, have some really distinct personalities and, mm -hmm. and are, are very cool NPCs to interact with. Um, but one of my favorite things about this game that I noticed this time playing that I did not notice when I played back at PAX East is um, the multipliers when you drop things on beats um, and when you match the type of request that the audience is making, um, if you don't do it in a certain amount of time, you get less points. So you have to think pretty fast. 
And you also have to stay on beat if you want to get those higher score multipliers. So as you said, the difficulty doesn't uh, scale or the difficulty levels isn't something that you choose at the outset. But there is definitely a level of complexity that you can sort of meet in order to get those higher scores and, you know, five stars every time. And I, I can see this game getting really, really complex and deep for people who are ready to get into it and who maybe even have some experience doing pr production um, and working with music in different tracks. So I really loved it. My favorite mix that I did was, okay, it was the drum beat from the song called Tongue Tied. I, I had to take a picture. And then mm -hmm. the, uh, the piano from Never Gonna Give You Up and also from Dance Monkey. Nice. And then the audio from uh, Summertime. <laughs> and when you, when you see the different tracks and you put the different things in your, your little DJ kit, it seems like it's not going to make sense or like it'll sound weird. But what Harmonix has done is they've sort of tweaked every song just the slightest bit so that they all do go together. And some mixes will sound better than others, but it really does make you feel like you're a musical genius when you get something good. <laughs> And um, it, it's very, very addictive. I was dancing and grooving the whole time. It made me feel like I, I wanted a crowd of people in front of me to start entertaining mm -hmm. in real life. Like it, it definitely, it, it scratched a really great itch for a combination of rhythmic games, but then also just like complex puzzle solving. Yeah, I'm like really, really impressed with what I've seen so far. I think the thing that was really interesting about the build that we saw here in addition to some of the more tracks that they have announced since PAX East is that we got to see multiplayer. So I was really kind of confused about how they were going to be able to incorporate multiplayer into a DJ game. I'm like, Ugh, it feels inherently like there's going to be some <laughs> real rough matchups happening but the way that they're doing is, is really fascinating so I'm gonna pull up just a little bit of the multiplayer b-roll so that you guys can take a look we did show a little bit of it um earlier but um here's a little bit more of it for you guys while I go over some of these details so the game accommodates up to four players in collaborative multiplayer all mixing and you can bring eight spectators into your room as well for a total of 12 people in your party so the spectators can make requests they can drop emojis as you can see here people are dropping emojis so if you like like a a track or like a mix that somebody's doing you can like give them little heart emojis or you know all the different other kinds of emojis that you can earn there's little mini rhythm games that allow you to send custom messages though you have to do these little mini games on the beat and then you get to earn points you can see on the left hand side there they're like hitting it on the beat and then it allows you to send messages to the other people that you're playing with and I just found it such a fun experience that I would really love to do this in groups and really have that kind of group collab experience uh, playing around with music. They are going to have a battle mode online eventually, but they did not show me the battle mode during my play session. But um, as you play through the game, you're going to be leveling, leveling up. Leveling up is going to gain you tokens. Tokens will then help you unlock music and cosmetics. Um, that's the currency essentially that lets you buy stuff. They're going to have style tokens and music tokens, and they're only earnable in the game. You cannot buy them with money. But of course, you are going to be able to buy music DLC down the road. Harmonix has always done a lot of music expansion packs and music licensing costs money. So of course you have to pay for it. But I was glad to hear that the cosmetics in the game and some of these fun, unlockable ways to customize your DJ, your stage are all earnable in the game as well. And then of course you can do really cool things with the community infuser by saving your mixes so you can save your mixes and you can listen to your friends mixes you can share your mixes with your friends so if you have a friend who's a dj or if you're a dj and you're like our experiment and you're like oh i made something real good like re was saying she just really had this fun mix that came together she could put it on her fuser hub and friends that follow her on fuser could listen to it which i thought was really cool so i I think that this game has a ton of potential and I'm really excited to see where they go. Now, the thing that I do want to mention that I was concerned about mm. was, of course, as content creator, something that plagues us all the time is content ID and DMCA takedown. Yeah. 
I absolutely think that DMCA and Content ID have a place and a purpose and are important. I think it's absolutely going to devastate mm. a potential Fuser community moment happening, particularly mm. on Twitch. Because mm. I asked the Harmonix and the NCSoft team, you know, how are you guys going to combat Twitch's new very aggressive DMCA takedown policies? And they're like, we are still working on that. You know, we're having conversations. They, of course, have licensing agreements in place. Harmonix, very, very good at licensing. They've been doing it for decades at this point. And I think what they're trying to catch up to is where all of the different video platforms are at with their content ID and DMCA. So I'm kind of bummed to say that I don't think us streaming Fuser is ever going to happen. Yeah, it, it's very Dang. disappointing because honestly, this is one of the the most fun it, rhythm games that I've ever played to to be fair like it it actually no I think it is the most fun that I've had playing a rhythm game and and I get to feel creative I get to feel intelligent and mm -hmm. also score a lot of points and I have the crowd hype and if that could be a real group of people cheering for me it would be even better and you know, just imagine having like an, a Twitch online dance party, you know, like there's just so much potential there if you could just share this music with people. But there are so many reasons why we probably will not will not be able to do that. And that's really disappointing. Yeah, yep, I echo all that sentiment as well. But we, of course, are very excited about Fuser and a full disclaimer. You know, we've been supported by Alex Agropoulos from Harmonix since What's Good Games has started. Everybody knows my husband used to work there. I'm a self-proclaimed Harmonix fangirl. If you want to let that color our commentary of the game, please, by all means, do. But I'm, I'm hyped for this game. I'm pumped. I did ask them about VR because you look at these visuals in the game. And I'm just oh, like, yeah. this looks super cool, uh, super fun. You get these shots of the stage in the background, especially with the spectate mode in the, multi the collaborative multiplayer. I was like, yo, this feels like a really fun Harmonix music VR moment collab waiting to happen. And they were like, you know, we don't really have anything to report about VR at this time. <laughs> and I was like, ah, oh, bummer. It just kind of feels like they are focusing their scope of work on this product and that if this does insanely well, maybe VR is a potential down the road. But I don't blame them for, you know, keeping the scope smaller at the beginning and saying, let's see how the community responds to Fuser first and then... We can talk about VR, but knowing what they're doing with Autica and obviously their harmonics music VR, I would just really love to get this in VR. It would be cool. This is it like have Oculus fun. Quest dance parties. Oh, yeah. And you ladies are doing a good job of like hyping me up. I'm watching all the footage. And I'm confused as hell. It is, is very it overwhelming. It, it, okay. It's overwhelming if you don't have the, the tutorial moment. Um, and they do walk you through like, this is how you pick this kind of track and okay. you can do, you know, drums from this song and then the vocals from this song. And they, they walk you through every single step of how to mix things. Um, but it is a little bit overwhelming looking at that UI if you haven't had that tutorial experience. Okay. Yet. Okay, good. I'm like, how the hell are they playing? <laughs> it's a lot this going now? on. Okay. Absolutely. I don't blame you, Britt, for feeling a little lost. And I think once you get to know all of the different songs that are in your crate, because they don't just drop this entire library of music on you, just like with Rock Band, right? You had to unlock the songs as you went along. And so you got to know each of these songs and you'll get to know, you know, the guitar lines, the bass lines, and they're all color coded which is really great. Harmonix has always been really awesome about that. And so that really helps knowing, okay, well, I have to drop this one on this one. And then they have like, you know, the beat lines going across the bottom. So like Rhee was talking about with the scoring, you can really scale the difficulty kind of on your own if you want to chase those really high scores, going for the more intricate beat, beat, beat matching um, at the speed at which you're matching the music perfectly versus just maybe you're having fun. And there's a freestyle mode too where you can just play around and learn the game. Awesome. Great. That's what I'll do. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, but thank you again to NCSoft for having me out and for letting us try out the build. I am pumped for this game to come out. Yes. And for people who are interested in playing, the game is out very soon, November 10th, 2020. Just add it to the pile of November games. <laughs> come on, Harmonix. Cut us, cut us some slack. Did you have to come out in November? No sleep. No <laughs> sleep November. <laughs> no sleep On the November. day of the Xbox launch, too. It is. <laughs> yeah. Well... There you go. All right. So next up, Brittany, you mm. have been playing 
Wasteland 3 and CrossCode. I just, I'm very early. Thanks. I gave you a dramatic pause, a pregnant pause, if you will. (laughs) It was very pregnant. Uh, So, yeah, I'm only like two hours in a CrossCode, but I get the feeling it's going to be my jam. It's a very, it looks like an old school RPG, and I will talk about it on next week's show when I've played more of it. I'm also maybe five or six hours into Wasteland 3, uh, which I'm loving, but again, far too early to talk about it in depth, but um, it kind of scratches that divinity original sin it's for me and this game does have a steep steep learning curve so I'm still trying to wrap my head around all the mechanics so unfortunately I don't have a lot to say about either one of those titles but I am playing them and so far I'm having a great time more to come soon like next week soon excellent yeah well then I will just keep talking because (laughs) I am also very excited um, to talk to you guys about my hands-on time with Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War Yes. So Activision invited me to preview Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War, the campaign, which we already talked about. And then they invited me back a little bit later on to talk about the multiplayer. So they had the worldwide multiplayer reveal last week. So if you guys were following, you probably saw a bunch of content creators showing their gameplay. I also captured some gameplay for you, everybody. And I hope that you enjoy just how good I am not at this game. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't you say you played with a bunch of pros, though? Cut yourself some slack, baby girl. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, there was definitely a lot of people in our session that were so good at the game that I was like, wow, um, this is embarrassing. <laughs> I feel dumb. I'm just going to w- be in the back. And maybe I won't show you guys the end scorecard. But um, <laughs> t- take a look here. This is one of the new maps. It's called Miami. We played a couple of different modes on it. I mean, the game just looks beautiful. It's gorgeous. I mean, no surprise. This is going to be a next generation game. It's going to be a current generation game. I mean, Call of Duty mm. continually impresses with their phenomenal graphics and animation that they do. And it's been really interesting watching the partnership between Raven and Treyarch and kind of how they're working side by side on this title. Of course, you know, Treyarch is known for the Black Ops multiplayer. It's probably one of the more popular. Um, and... A lot of the Black Ops multiplayer components are returning. Things that you guys know, I just saw there just a little bit, the creative class, the gunsmith is back, and they did change a couple of things, though. So the gameplay I'm going to show you a little bit right now, this is just classic uh, domination, and, you know, I just, I run around this beautiful hotel just capturing zones, (laughs) trying not to die. I thought I held my own pretty well, quite honestly. I do like how they, I think I've just played so much control in Destiny 2 that I really like the idea that they kind of give you some space to move around in Domination, Mm. whereas you're just standing on like a molehill in uh, Destiny. (laughs) But (laughs) what I like about what they're doing with Black Ops multiplayer this time around is that they're kind of changing up some things. One of the things that I really liked that they've changed this time around with Call of Duty multiplayer is the score streak system. So it's one of the least favorite things about Call of Duty for me is that I feel like I can never get powerful enough to get meaningful uh, kill streak rewards because I am just not a good enough player to be able to earn some of those 10 streak or higher rewards. So what they did is that they changed the score streak system to mean that the score is no longer lost on death. Instead, you're going to earn a score multiplier for stringing together multiple kills in the same life. But you're also going to earn scores for helping your team play the objective and score streak goes on cooldown after it's used to prevent spamming. I absolutely loved this choice. I think the idea of rewarding rewarding people for helping their teammates with objectives was really smart. We've all been in multiplayer matches with people where nobody's playing the objective. They're just going around trying to kill as many people and then they tank your team anyway because you didn't play the objective. Mm. (laughs) Nothing worse than that. Don't be that guy. Yeah. So it was a good step in the right direction. Absolutely. So I think that that's great. And it allows people to feel like they're powerful even if they're a new player maybe they're playing with accessibility settings or maybe they're just a bunch of friends who are just trying to have fun and not trying to play in in call of duty world league (laughs) you know and i think that that's great and i love that they're looking at things like that to make call of duty multiplayer more approachable for people who maybe have stepped away for a while and have said hey like i 
just didn't think this game was approachable for me and didn't feel friendly to me. And now maybe I'll I'll give it a shot. I mean, and of course, the game feels snappy. It feels crisp. The guns feel great. The guns in Call of Duty have always had such unique personalities and a lot of those are back. What we discovered in our play session, the people that I was playing with, was that a lot of us always were playing with this SMG. Uh, mm. I have to remember the exact name of it because the way that it was balanced, just we were just... It was just OP, like, to, to be <laughs> yes. clear. Like in the chat between sessions, we were all like, are you using that gun? Are you using that gun? <laughs> so everybody's using that gun. The meta's already <laughs> strong. Okay, okay. Now, and to be clear, like this, there's still balancing happening, of course. So like it's very possible that that gun is no longer going to be as OP as it was when we were playing. So, you know, take that with a grain of salt, <laughs> of course. But the multiplayer alpha is happening this weekend. So mm -hmm. if you guys are watching... Some of my gameplay are like, hey, this looks kind of interesting. Maybe I want to go check this out. Yep, there I died. Oh, oh. <laughs> I died. Uh, I died a lot. Uh, so, yeah. Andrea, I have a question. So the multiplayer for this will be supported alongside Warzone? Yes. So I think I have the exact... I want to read the notes from Activision on this so I don't get this wrong. So okay. they announced that at the campaign reveal that, yes, they will be supporting... Warzone with Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War. There's going to be crossover content. There's going to be cross progression. Mm -hmm. So if you make progression in Warzone, you can bring it into Black Ops Cold War multiplayer and vice versa, which I think oh. is awesome. Mm. So that is important, I think, for people who have invested a lot of time into Warzone between big Call of Duty releases. So according to the document that I have here from the Activision team, it says... Black Ops Cold War features a unified progression journey that is shared with Call of Duty Warzone, adding inventory items that can be used in both titles. Hmm. Both games will also share post-launch content from a narrative standpoint, interweaving the themes, locations, weapons, and vehicles of ba Black Ops Cold War into Warzone action. Okay, so that means Verdansk may change or go away or turn into a whole nother map. This is what it sounds like. Or there may be like a Verdansk mode and then a Cold War mode with a different map. Do I get the same weapons? So I don't think all of the weapons are going to be fully playable in both games because it wouldn't canonically probably make sense with where Black Ops Cold War is. Yeah. Right? Because of the era it is set in the 80s. So I think that they're probably going to have to restrict specific guns you bring in and mm -hmm. then vice versa like guns you can bring progression guns that you bring to the multiplayer in black ops cold war multiplayer versus okay. what you bring to Warzone. that would be my guess but i did not ask that specific okay. question it's very possible they have answered it and i just do not have the answer yeah no that, that i'm sure we'll get more details obviously as it gets closer but um i know for any time that i hear cross progression or you know i'm leveling between the two I know that that may or may not apply to the actual weapons that I'm using because, as we all know, the more you use the weapon, the more you use the weapons, the more progression you get, the better unlocks you get for the different attachments. And if that is not consistent across the two games, then that means I would be playing uh, with a slight disadvantage if I choose one over the other. If I go back and forth versus concentrating all my time in one, um, in in only progressing those weapons whenever I'm playing, because as we all know, we have a limited amount of time for these games, so. It'll be interesting to see how they balance all of that out because I, I still have a, a number of questions personally. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I think that they're also going to be rolling out, you know, more details on this in the weeks to come leading up to launch. So just a couple of other things that I wanted to show you guys um, in the rollout of new features. So create a class is back, but it's been simplified and supercharged is what they're calling it. So you're never going to go into battle under equipped with a new slot based on a loadout system. Greater flexibility also means making a powerful class with ease. So what's different is that there's four Four new wild cards for deep customization. So I'm going to see if I can pull up hmm. some of my gameplay where I customize. And I have to say, one of these wild cards um, allows you to have six modifiers Ooh. on your weapon, which we were all like, um, six. Hmm. You know, uh, this kind of feels like it's too op like yeah. how how are we going to combat that 
Um, well, this map was super fun. This isn't the create a class stuff. I'll find that in a second. But <laughs> this map was awesome because you jump, you can jump in and out of the water and you can drive the boats and you can swim and you can, okay, now this feels very much like physics inaccurate, but you can shoot all of these guns underwater, underwater. and you <laughs> oh my don't God, yes. lose any like bullet velocity. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> we love that. <laughs> and I was like, I don't care, Call of Duty. Throw <laughs> physics out the window. Let's go. <laughs> I'm just physics, so excited to see new environments fun. through a first person perspective. I feel and like I'm not staring at my own backyard. You know, it's like, oh my God, it's so pretty. It's a <laughs> ship and it's water. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's just is getting to me. Looking at the lighting effects on the water, the game looks fantastic. So, speaking land, sea, and air, is, yeah, they write here that multiplayer is upping the ante with a new fleet of vehicles for any situation. So, of course, you know, you're going to have helicopters, gunboats, dirt bikes atvs all kinds of things and so there's an attack helicopter that's a score streak unlock a later score streak unlock that is just filthy when you get it so i'm noticing something that i don't think i've seen yes health bars on your enemies oh interesting that you bring that up so there are a lot of customization options in that regard and there's also perks that you can unlock that show people's gamer tags above their score or uh, above their head so mm -hmm. that is something in the customization system and create a class huh. the health bar specifically i don't recall is that a perk or, or is no that i don't think the health bar is i think but the name above people's heads is, is definitely a perk okay for sure that's cool for you know for vendettas and vengeance and whatnot what what i'm intrigued by is is the thought that i will now know if somebody just one-shotted me or if i accidentally hit myself with a grenade and then they got the final kill <laughs> yeah or you just get shot from somebody who's underwater who you never saw coming <laughs> as i just did here but <laughs> i mean like look at that you just full full bullets underwater i love it yeah I it was it. super it this was super fun. fun this map was a really great time yeah it's very cool and one of the other new modes that we got to play let me see if i can pull up my gameplay it was an escort mode called vip escort so it's a tactical oh. 6v6 operation uh so this is combined arms that we were just playing if you guys were interested so that one's <laughs> super fun so the escort mission was really interesting because it really makes you kind of slow down the pace a little bit with Call of Duty. And that is something that you and I, Rhee, are used to from playing Rainbow Six. Yeah. But not in Call of Duty, particularly a Black Ops Call of Duty, because Black Ops is known for being more action forward and being like super fast paced escort mission is essentially that there's two balloon drops on the map and you have to protect one person on your team who is the random role VIP and help help them get to the extraction point. Mm -hmm. And I was the VIP for the very first match and I was so confused because <laughs> you don't get access to your loadout. You get a knife. Oh, that's it. Well, that's helpful. And I was like, uh, and you get a pistol. So you can see I have this like little gun. Okay. And I was just like, wait a minute, where's my gun? I, where's my, wait, this is it? This is it? I just have this little gun? Um, but so you can see my teammates are running around, like trying to make sure that I don't, I don't get shot. But it was a really interesting mode because Call of Duty really hasn't done something like this before. Yeah. And it really makes yeah. you kind of think strategically because it made me think a little bit about games like Valorant where you have these two points of the map and you really have to pick between one point of the map or the other and then you mm -hmm. see teams really kind of diverged one way and it leaves open the possibility for strategies of like well do you split up your team and send people as decoys over to the other side mm -hmm. do you like keep everybody together and go to one side because the balloons drop on other opposite sides of the map and you just have to get to the to the get to the chopper <laughs> <laughs> so so does each side have a vip at the same time no or do you take turns no, just one side has the VIP uh, and then you okay. switch and then you switch that. sides. So you have offense and defense for, for each one. Right. I and then once you die, you're dead. That's it. That's it. Okay. It's over. I think I would like to be the VIP. I feel like that's a role <laughs> I could actually excel at. Just, just run around run screaming and with a knife. Hide <laughs> and no one have high expectations of me. I have nothing but a pistol and a knife. But you can't Protect hide because you have a you have to get to the helicopter for to be extracted. Do or you have a big old marker over your head? You don't. For the VIP? You okay. don't if you're the VIP, um, but you do. I mean, I guess technically your team can kill all of the other 
people on the map if you mm-hmm. want to hide the whole time and they want to, yeah. you know, go just search and destroy. But, and destroy his but look at that. I got bitches. out safe and sound. Yeah. Extraction. Good me. I did I did the thing. Good job, Andrea. You extracted yourself. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, so it's um it's four rounds and then you switch sides each round so then somebody else uh, on the opposite team gets picked. And it, this map was really fun because we got to have these snowmobiles on this map and so when you were on the other side so we're switching sides here um we spawned on the other side and i instantly like grabbed this snowmobile and was just like zipping around <laughs> Bye. On it. i was just like oh look it i want a snowmobile let's go <laughs> yes. that's great and it just like really kind of makes the p- gameplay a little bit more dynamic. And it honestly, it kind of really reinvigorated my interest in playing Call of Duty multiplayer because I love playing Warzone with you, Re, mm-hmm. but I just, just did not have any desire to jump back into <laughs> Call of Duty multiplayer with Modern Warfare because it's just, it's really, it's really intimidating. It is, it is. But it, it's exciting to see them playing around with new game modes because, I mean, let, let's face it, like it can always use a refresh and things like gun game or like as we've seen, like the Warzone map um, in the different, oh, what is the the one where you extract all of the money? The one oh, that we can play. oh, well, it used to be called Blood Money, but Blood then money. they changed the name of it, didn't they? It's something more more uh, PC, more palatable. Um, but it is nice to see them shaking things up, you know, and adding new game modes. And of course, we like control maps. We like search and destroy. Plunder. Plunder. Thank you. And um, I know the most recent one that I think... I was the biggest fan of um, that they've done is Kill Confirmed, which was a, a nice change of pace where it actually encourages you to go confirm your kill and not just hide or corner camp and never leave the same little post that you like to be in, which is a legitimate strategy, um, but a little I feel boring. Like you're attacking me. <laughs> it's a little boring. I'm just saying it's a little boring. But no, it's it's nice to see them experimenting with different things. And um, escort missions are always uh, a pain in some games, but in this case, this looks to be pretty fun. So yeah, I'm looking forward to trying this. Yeah, I think what's great, too, about this mode is that it allows you to try out some different create a class loadouts, right? So if you're really like a run and gun kind of person going shotguns or SMGs, that that you can maybe try some of the rifles or the snipers Mm -hmm. in this mode and maybe slow down, you know, the type of gameplay you're doing. And if you guys are looking at my gameplay and seeing some artifacting, um, please just know that's not what the final game is going to look like, of course. I was playing this over a streaming service. Actually, I was playing this on PlayStation 4 Pro, but the way that I was capturing it, um, it's just not the final build. So, yeah. um, we all know this game is going to look amazing. So yes. <laughs> please don't judge this pre-release build. Actually, you can try the alpha on PlayStation yeah, 4 if you want to check it out for yourself. <laughs> but yeah, so I could keep going on. There's a lot of features. There's a lot to unpack with multiplayer, but I wanted to touch on it and say I had a blast. It was super fun, and I'm interested in seeing how they're going to cross Warzone and Black Ops Cold War together. Yeah. Looking forward to knowing more. Yeah, absolutely. All right. We are getting close to the end of the show. But we have to talk about the game that is taking Twitch by storm. (laughs) Among us. Uh, Among us. So, Ree, how would you describe this game for people who have never played it before? Never played it before. Um, If you've ever played any sort of like a mafia or werewolf or, you know, any of those games where somebody is (laughs) secret Hitler, where somebody is um, not on the same page as far as their goals. Uh, as everybody else in the party and willing to lie and and gaslight in order to stay uh, under the radar and and, oh. and and successfully sabotage and murder everyone around them. And it brings out a very interesting side of some people, um, including myself, because I am not great with the seat <laughs> and <laughs> makes me very uncomfortable. And when we played on stream this week, it was very apparent uh, once that one time I was an imposter. <laughs> Um, and <laughs> it, it's, it's a lot of fun. So the way the game works is like, you're a bunch of little bean looking characters. Um, I'm assuming you're space craft fairers, some kind of engineers or whatever. Um, and you're on the ship and everybody has assignments that they need to go complete in order to fix things that are broken. And while everybody's running around fixing different assign or fixing different things that are broken, um, one or two people are secretly trying to murder everybody. And they can do that a number of ways. They can just straight up run up and start slashing bodies, or they could go to something that is not broken and sabotage it, thus creating a really um, hectic moment for everybody. And everybody sort of concentrates their their 
attention into one area and then that leaves you know people who are sort of straggling uh at risk and you can go pick them off so there's a lot of <laughs> there's a lot of strategy involved in how you go about either completing your tasks or completing your murders but then once a body is found or if somebody is feeling suspicious you can either report the body or call an emergency meeting and everybody stops to discuss <laughs> And this is where the shenanigans goes down. This is the, this is where you start to make or break friendships because the imposters will try to lie, but they will know who one another are. And everybody else trying to figure it out is literally left completely in the dark and <laughs> throwing accusations around sometimes that are incorrect and kicking people out who are actually innocent, which is not cool. And it, it gets it gets really interesting. Um, when that <laughs> happens, because, you know, people have feelings about that. And oh, are, you, uh, are you throwing some serious subtweet shade right now? Do you want to air some grievances? <laughs> I'm just saying when you get murdered, it sucks. <laughs> yes. I got murdered a lot. I know exactly how much it sucks. It's yeah. And, so uh, it, and you know, house rules is that you don't talk once you're murdered. So you can't, you know, if you're in discord, you, you try not to give anything away or like, you know, name your killer or your assailant. But uh, it's a really fun party game. And as we said earlier in the in the show, it is cross play with Steam and iOS and Android, I believe. So it's really easy to get into. The controls are very simple. It, you can do it all on a touch screen. And uh, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah. I was watching the gameplay. And obviously, Andrea was the imposter because I can see it on her screen. Yeah. But then when Re, whenever Re died, you had that look on your face. Look at your – oh, my yeah. God. The faces you're making are so good. Uh-huh. She's so suspicious. Uh-huh. Don't be suspicious. I mean, you should oh be suspicious because I definitely murdered you. <laughs> there's a there's a Twitch clip called uh, Rihanna though that I think is a, a great example of how I handle the pressure of trying to be. <laughs> it's trying tough. to be the bad guy. It's tough to be the imposter. Because it's a lot of pressure. I've always talked about how I'm terrible at lying in these games, and I was very successful for the first couple of times I was the imposter. And then I just made a couple critical errors when I was the <laughs> imposter before, just gave myself away. Because there's a, you know, there's a strategy to when you sabotage or when you murder somebody because you don't want anybody else to see you do it, right? Because um, you want to make sure you can blame somebody else. And then you can see here that if you get the wrong person, oh, Kayla was not the imposter, but we booted her from sp into space anyway. Uh, that was not oh. a we. I was already dead. So that's true. But you can see our little little <laughs> characters here. You can buy customizations. You can see I have a little dog friend following me around on my Aww. screen down there. Um, and because I'm the imposter, my name is in red. And then I can travel through the vent system. So I can pop up in other rooms and kind of make quick getaways. But I also, of course, don't want anybody to see me go in or out of the vent. And Blessing kept having trouble with that. About <laughs> oh, people no, really? catching him coming out of the vent. It's <laughs> like, I'm not the killer. I was hiding in the vent. <laughs> he got so unlucky. He like got the imposter pull like five times in a row. I mean, that's, oh. that works with his character alignment. But he was very good at, at sneakily murdering people and then lying about it. So what? I don't. you, you read into that what you want. <laughs> Or plus. <laughs> um, but yeah, we're excited to play this on our Patreon after our stream tomorrow. Brittany, I can't wait for you to play this. Oh my gosh. I'm excited to see it's gonna be good. how you're going to play and how it's going to all roll out. <laughs> I'll try to get my best poker face going. Good. But yeah. I'm glad that something like this has been really popular for people. It's cheap. It's $4.99. Yep. You know, it's just five bucks. Yep. You know, you can buy the customizations for a couple bucks each. You can remove, if you're playing on your phone, you can remove the ads for like one ninety nine. Mm -hmm. There aren't any ads in the Steam version, though. I don't think so. I think I yeah, the four ninety nine just gets you the full game with no ads. Yeah, um, and so I, it's just like it's it's a no brainer. This yeah. game is fun, but I would recommend playing with a, as full of a group as you can. So you yes. can decide whoever the host is can decide if they want one imposter or two imposters. And I think when you have two imposters, it adds a nice little wrinkle to it. Oh, yeah. We tried can, to play with can five. can be in cahoots. Yeah, exactly. We tried to play with five people. And it's it's m much easier to figure out who the imposter is yeah. with fewer people, obviously. Yeah. So. Fun yeah. game. Right. Fun times. Yeah. It was great. And uh, I think I think that's going to do it for yeah. today's episode. Jam-packed. Jam-packed. So much. Jam-packed. <laughs>
We got to get you that PlayStation 5 pre-order, baby girl. Oh, yeah, we do. I know. You guys, the, during this entire recording, I kept hitting the checkout <laughs> button on my cart. And then, of course, wouldn't you know it, a refresh. And it's like, there's nothing in your cart. And I was like, cart Gosh, thief. damn it. <laughs> so hopefully you guys had some luck getting your PlayStation 5 pre-orders. But I'm still confident that they will be on shelves in physical stores yeah. later this year. You'll get a chance. Thanks. And if not, you know, Re is shipping hers here. So I'll just, you know. Maybe. <coughs> um. Okay. No. And on that note, enjoy the rest <laughs> of your night, your weekend, your morning, wherever you are listening to the podcast. And we will see you guys next week. Bye, everybody. 